we have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. There's a reason I do my podcast. Oh, hell no. You, Madeline Albright. Hey everyone, you are not going to believe what's going down tonight. One of my friends posted that Madeline freaking Albright's going to be in Denver tonight. She's having an event for her new book, Fascism. So I thought, what's the chance that I could find a ticket and get there tonight in time? Well, I got on Facebook and found a person. I'm going to get the ticket right now. I'll update you guys in a bit. Guess where she's doing her event? Uh, Trinity United Methodist Church. I kid you not, Madeline Albright. I, 500,000 dead Iraqi children was worth in 1996. Uh, she's doing an event at a church. So I thought, huh, it's three hours from now. What's the chance that I could get a ticket and head over there? Well, that was easy. It's happening, guys. It's bright. Hey, everyone. Stephen Clyde here from the Peace and Liberty Podcast. I'm here with... Donna Sieper. Kathleen. Tom Gerald. I'm here with a good friend. Kathy. Kathy. The best books you will ever read. This is Fool's Air by Scott Horn. You need that. Go on Amazon, check out this book. This is the one book you want to read. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you define fascism? Because I think a lot of people are confused about it. Oh, let's see. I would say it is um, authoritarian. Absolutely. I think it's... Um, uh, most people think of uh, Hitler as sort of his uh, total domination of... You don't have any choice. You're not... You lose control. Right. Absolutely. You yeah. You don't have any freedom. I don't really have a hard and fast definition that I go by. It's, it's, well, it's, it's pretty one, predictably, it's when the state controls every aspect of your life, right? Well, that's one way of looking at it, for sure. How else would you look at it? Very authoritarian. Um, totalitarian government, um, dictatorship, um, not rule of law, not individual liberties, no freedom of speech. How would you compare it to communism? Uh, um, I would say... Hey, what ideologies do you think has killed more? Communism or fascism? Kills more? Has killed more. I would say yeah, fascism. Absolutely. Are you talking about Mao? Are you talking about the Red Scare? Well, Mao was communist. About, yeah, yeah, that I was know. all communist. Right, right. I won't even begin to speculate on that one. Communism's killed at least 100 million people in the 20th century. Fascism, probably at least 25 million. But well, obviously fascism then. Fascism? Yeah. It's actually communism. Communism's probably killed about 100... Yeah, by R.J. Rumble's estimates, probably 140 plus million, but those are high-end estimates, at least 100 million. Uh, and fascism, you know, Hitler killed like 12 million, 6 million Jews. They come to see Madeleine Aubrey tonight. Because uh, she's an icon. I heard this interview the other day of this person. It was a politician. I won't say their name. They said... During the Persian Gulf War, there were about like half a million Iraqi children that died during that. It was absolutely terrible. And she said uh, that was worth it. She said that was worth it. Uh, can you that believe it? That surprises me. That surprises you? Yes. I wouldn't have guessed her to um, to say that. So I, I, maybe, you know. Did you know that was actually Madeleine Albright in 1996? I did not know. And I don't know if you're telling me the truth either. Think about a politician that says something like that. That's a pretty wicked person, right? It's a heck of a trade-off. That was actually Madeleine Albright, 1996. Mm. Uh, what do you think about a politician that says something like that? Yes. He's a writer. Irresponsible. Okay. That was actually Madeleine Albright, 1996. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I, 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 you want me to show you the video? Uh, no, no. Okay. okay. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much for your time. to respond to fear in such a way. And that when things aren't going right, 
it's very uh, seductive to blame the other, um, have scapegoats. And one of the hard parts that I've had in the book is actually describing fascism. It's not an ideology. It's a method for gathering um, support um, in a way that I believe is demagogic. And one of the things that does happen is in fact to create the us versus them. I apologize to you. You came into Denver a few years ago and I kind of accosted you in the airport because I was so excited. <laughs> First of all, I'm very glad you didn't do in the airport what's happened to me recently where this woman came up to me and she said, uh, I just heard you speak somewhere, and you're so clear for somebody your age. <laughs> <laughs> and the part that I think is a real issue here now, what I'm concerned about when I'm being my more academic self is that the social contract is broken. What happened is that people some time ago uh, decided uh, that they would give up some of their individual rights in order to have protection and services from a government. Taxes are the price you pay for living in a civilized country. And there are responsibilities that the government has towards the people, and in turn that the citizens have towards the government. And that is broken down. And I think that we have to figure out how to mend that again and decide who does what. We need government, not one that tells us all the time what to do, but we do need them to build roads and... Um, and really quick, man. So, you know, I think the intention behind the left, all right, I'm just going to say the left in general, because not only is there a left as in Democrats, but there's left as in socialism or communism and progressivism, even in libertarian circles. What I want to get to, though, is what is the, what is the, uh, the appeal to the left? I mean, so... Why do people want, why do you think people go that route versus the more conservative libertarian anarcho-capitalists like we are, right? Because let's face it, we're all conservative anarcho-capitalists. Why is that? What, what, what do you think is the appeal by modern culture for people to go that route? What are we doing wrong and what are they doing right? I'll give you a perfect example, and let me just let me just quote from you uh, something, and it's a quote you hear often. Taxes are the prices we pay for a civilized society. Without them, you know, how would I have gotten here today? I drove on roads. I used the post office the other day. I mean, did I get did I get that talking point word for word? Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, my name is Steven, and I host the podcast. So I assure you, every other question will be more nice. But back in 1996, you you said the deaths of 500,000 Iraqi children was worth it. Do you take that back? It's on YouTube. Go look it up. Let me just tell you. everyone, please like, follow, donate, subscribe, and share. Any donations will be used to reach more people.